Hey there, uh, welcome back to another review. Taking a little short break from Tales from the Crypt reviews and uh, Wish Craven reviews and Nightmare on Elm Street reviews, just to do a little bit of catch up work with uh, reviewing some horror films I've been wanting to see uh, and uh, also some other movies that I saw, like this movie, which I saw uh, at least a couple months ago, and I'm not watching it again. Because there's absolutely no reason for me to do so. Because uh, <laughs> uh, I, I remember whatever, what little bit of the film that was there wasn't much. There wasn't much anyway to remember. So it's not like I need to watch it again. And that movie is Harbinger Down! As in down in the dumps! As in down in the shitter! Is it down in where you take a piss and you leave a shit and it doesn't flush? Or down in the porta potty? Or down in the fucking sewer? Or down in the dumps? Because this movie sucks! Oh man, Harbinger, two thumbs down! Down! Go down! It's like a hooker that's gonna go down on you, or and then she bites your dick off. That's what it is. Harbinger, down! The worst type of down. The worst type of going down. This movie would be like going down an elevator, and then the elevator just fucking crashes into the fucking ground. Right through the fucking floor. Into the seventh level of hell. Anyway, um, yeah, as you can see, I'm not a fan of this film. I personally would have to say this is the worst film of the year for me. I'm talking worse than Pixels. I'm I'm serious. I'm not fucking around. I really am serious. This is like the worst film of the year I've seen so far. But but it only had three hundred eighty four thousand dollars to work with, and it's a low budget movie. I mean, you gotta give it a pass. I'm not giving it a pass for having shitty writing, shitty directing, shitty editing, shitty characters for the most part, and really below subpar visual effects and makeup special effects for a film that's funded and has effects from ADI, Studio ADI, a company ran by Tom Woodruff and Al Gillis, who were speaking all of this, all, talking all of this, hyping this movie up and talking about we're going to make this movie to show the world that practical effects aren't dead, and then this is going to be the movie that's going to raise, raise the flag, and and keep it high for practical effects. It's going to make people realize that practical effects should be here to stay. But really what this film does is makes us think, well, maybe they shouldn't because they look cheap, they look bad, they look unimaginative, and I've seen better CGI effects than some of the practical effects in this movie. And don't give me the budget excuse because... You know what? I've seen films in the 80s, like The Deadly Spawn, that had less than half this movie's budget, that had better looking special effects, better looking creature effects. They didn't have creature effects that used fucking Christmas lights <laughs> on their on their effects. Seriously, there's sequences in this film where they use fucking Christmas lights or LED lights or whatever the fuck they were. They look like Christmas lights. Like, the kind of fucking lights... That, that the killer in, in Silent Night, Deadly Night would use to strangle somebody to death with. That's what I wanted to do with those lights. I wanted to wrap them around Al Gillis and Todd Wood, Wood, Woodruff's necks. They're like, what the fuck are you thinking? Choke the life out of them, or maybe just at least knock them out so they can, I don't know, maybe experience the same fucking pain I felt watching their piece of shit movie. I'm not letting, I'm not holding back on this fucking film, folks. I'm not doing it because I hated this movie. It was an absolute chore to sit through, and it was a film that I was looking forward to. So that makes it even worse. It's not only a shitty movie, it's, an, it's a disappointment. And that's something that makes the film... <laughs> to me, you know me personally, folks. If I'm looking forward to something and it's a piece of shit, then that's just, that's one of the worst feelings imaginable. And that's what really pisses me off. Is because when I give this film, 
I actually was looking forward to it. I liked the trailer. I liked the I liked the fact they got Lance Henriksen. I I like in the cast. I like the idea that okay, it's gonna be like the thing of John Carpenter's the thing, and they're gonna and they're gonna be more focused on practical effects. I even watched the video uh, that Al Gillis did for the Cracked, where he was trying to get people to to fund the project. If I had the money, I would have fund the, funded the project. And I look at back at it, I'm glad I didn't because the the movie that we got was a piece of shit. I mean, it if I had funded it, I would have wanted my money back. That's how bad this film was. I just I, I just don't get the pass this film gets from some people. Like, there, there gets a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 4.3 on IMDb, which I think that's way too high. It deserves a way low, a lot lower rating than that. But yeah, people say, it has higher production values than a lot of other direct-to-video movies. What movie, what, what, did you watch the same movie I did? Because what I saw was a movie that looked like it had a budget of about fucking 10 cents half the time. I mean, that's, that's being generous. Maybe about a fucking nickel. I've seen Sci-Fi Channel original movies that looked better than this, that had better directing and better editing. When you when Asylum films look better than your movie, that's a serious problem. And it's to be expected. Alec Gillis and Tom Woodard Jr. have never never directed a movie before, so they don't really know what they're doing, and it shows. They shouldn't have directed the film. That's what makes it sort of a vanity project more than anything else. From Al Gillis and Todd Woodward Jr. who just wanted to make a movie, and well, they couldn't get any investors, so they tried. They ended up tricking, duping a bunch of Kickstarter supporters into into funding the film, and then all they got was a bunch of shitty actors, other than Lance Henriksen, and didn't make him the lead for some reason. It said to make it yet another film where it's another female lead and. Just reminded me of the Thing prequel, which I also hated, so that didn't help. And it doesn't help either that this actress can't fucking act her way out of a fucking snowstorm. She can't act. She's terrible. A block of fucking wood would do a better job than she would. Hell, the fucking insulation my my parents are using the the help uh fix up our our kitchen right now that would be fucking be better that would deliver a better performance than she did it in this movie she's worse than packing and she's worse than home insulation yeah she's worse than fucking she's worse than a fucking wooden cabinet she's one of the worst actresses i've ever seen in a film she's just god awful she looks like one of the lost Kardashian sisters who just suddenly just showed up on the set of the film and decided she's going to be the star. And a big reason why is because she was one of the film's producers. She was a big, big, one of the big people on Kickstarter who ended up throwing in a lot of money. And mainly, she helped fund a lot of it under the... under. Under the understanding that, okay, if I give you this money, then I'm going to be the lead. Doesn't matter. Oh, it's a 4.6 out of 10, not, not a 4.3. So, you have this actress named Camille Balsamo, who can't fucking act worth a shit. And she ends up... Okay, she's a producer. And she ended up producing Harbinger Down. She, she's one of the producers of the film... That's why she got the role. Not because of her great acting, but because she was one of the producers of the film. Even if there was a better actress, it wouldn't have made much of a difference because the screenplay is so full of cliches and so unoriginal and so dull that it wouldn't have mattered who played the role anyway. I mean, this is a screenplay that has lines of dialogue like this. Oh, don't be so hickety-pickety! 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 Or, what kind of fucker Tom fuckery is this? Yeah, because it's like a Tom... It's a, it's a take on Tom foolery. I got a Tom for you, you know? You could end up having fucking Tom Green. I'd rather watch Tom Green's movies. I'd rather watch Freddy Got Fingered. I'd rather get fingered up the ass with a fucking power drill than sit the Arbinger down again.
God. So yeah, it's also written by Al Gillis, who did an absolutely atrocious job. It's like he just saw Leviathan again and was like, you know what, I'm just going to rip off Leviathan. Even though I don't like the film because I think the effects suck, which I got to say to Al Gillis, you're full of shit. Because the effects in Leviathan that you worked on are ten times better than your effects in Harbor Down, which just involve a bunch of fucking worms and tentacles and fucking what looks like fucking dildos and shit. It's a bunch of tentacles, like a, like it's fucking hentai porn or some shit. They spent some Japanese chick to show up out of nowhere on the side of the film, out of the side of the screen, and end up getting titty fucked or. Fucked up the pussy with a fucking tentacle. That's a fucking terrible the effect and unoriginal the fucking makeup effects were in this. It's just a bunch of fucking worms and tentacles and a bunch of fucking dicks wailing around and waving around. This is disappointing and just pathetic. You couldn't you couldn't do better than that? You're talking about well, we're trying to show that the practical effects are here to stay, and you give us something like that? Bad form, bad form. Shame on you, Al Gillis. And your screenplay sucks. You can't write characters. You can't write dialogue. We're gonna need a bigger bucket. Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger bucket to fit all this film's bullshit in. Cause there's a fucking ton of it. I don't even think the, that you can find a buck, bucket big enough to fit this film's bullshit in. That's how much this film is full of shit. So anyway, all right, let's get to a little bit of the rundown of the plot. So well, let's just go through the rest of the cast. You got Lance Henriksen plays Graf, who has nothing to do, who's just in the film to just try to get people to sucker people into watching it because it's got Lance Henriksen in it. I don't know why they didn't make him the lead. That's what I was under the understanding that he was going to be the lead. But no, they give it to some chick who is worse at acting than a fucking porn star. Then... We have the rest of the supporting cast, who isn't much. Matt Winston, who plays Steven. I really don't fucking remember his performance. That's how great it was. There's nothing really memorable at all about these performances. Uh, they're not given much to work with either. But, it, you know, hey, bad acting is bad acting, regardless or not if there's a bad script involved. Uh, Giovanni Samuels plays Ronell. She's not, I think she was just, a, she's the, was she the Russian chick? No, I think she was just she was she was the the token black chick. That's all she was. She was just a token black chick. You got a guy who who was supposed to be, I guess, the the lead guy, and he just excuse me, I just got these like a fucking piece of hair or some shit. God. Fucking movie. There's <laughs> like a piece of hair that just like in my fucking plane of vision. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. That's how I feel about this movie. Get the fuck out of my face, please. So you have this guy named Steven. You got Mel Bosamo, our lead. Sadie. Reed Collins is Bowman. Uh, Michael Esteem is Doc. I think it was just a... Doc? <laughs> oh, not, not, not the Doc. Not the Doctor. You know, like Richard Crenna and, and Leviathan. Uh, Mila Bajorn plays Svetlana and has one of the worst Russian actions I've ever seen. And it, it appears, it sometimes it disappears. This is so terrible. Some guy named Winston James Francis plays a big G. Big G. Yeah, it's a big grab ass. Big garbage. So anyway... What happens with the film? Okay, the movie opens up with a really shitty looking CGI sat satellite. Oh, oh yeah, there's no, there's, it's all practical. No, there actually are some really terrible CGI in this movie. The shitty, awful looking CGI of a satellite that ends up crashing to Earth or somewhere, something, or a Russian satellite or some shit in the past. And it was like, I guess sometime in the 80s or something. And then it crashes. And then you fast forward to present day. Where for some reason the movie's found footage now. Where you have this terrible researcher guy. Who looks like, 
he looks like a spitting image of James Cameron. Like, great, Jimmy Cammy is in this movie. And not the good James Cameron. Not the James Cameron who directed Aliens and so forth and The Terminator and True Lies. No, the James Cameron who's doing Avatar and talking shit about the original Terminator and saying shit like Terminator Genesis is great and talking about seeing the same scenes we already saw in the 80s was something that was so amazing. And the same guy who's saying the original Terminator was cheap, saying that it was and cheesy, and then saying that, oh, you know, an aliens, the alien queen should have been alien. Should, the alien queen should have been CGI. That same James Cammy. Jim, Jimmy Cammy. That same fucking James Cameron. It's that James Cameron. And he was so annoying. He's the guy who said, don't go all pickety pickety. What is I don't even know what the fuck hickety pickety is. Is that even a word? Was that the Gillis just making shit up? I wouldn't be surprised. Just pulled it out of his ass. Like, I need to find, write something stupid and funny for the guy to say. Oh, don't be a hickety pickety. I, I just can't believe that line of dialogue. I, I, my, 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 my brain is just... My head is blown. My mind is blown, blown out of my ass, that a film could have a line of dialogue that fucking stupid in it. Anyway, so you have that research guy with his crew, and they're in, they're getting ready to go to the Harbinger, which is a boat, which they're going to get on, and they're going to the Arctic somewhere. Also, it's like The Thing meets Leviathan, but with nothing that made those two films entertaining or fun. Because you know what made John Garbage The Thing and, and Leviathan so great? Good characters, likable characters, personalities. What we got here is a bunch of cardboard cutouts with no personalities. At least with the personalities that are there, they're nothing much. There's no character development, so you don't give a shit about anybody in this movie. The only person you care about is Lance Henriksen, because, hey, it's Lance Henriksen. And you actually do feel for him, because he had to deal with a lot of trauma when before he got this mission, uh, which also involved the death of, his death of his wife. But, no, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's not follow him. Uh, let's follow this chick. Who's a supermodel, uh, uh, fucking Victoria's Secret supermodel, whatever. I don't even know if she is or not. But she she looks like an underwear model to me. And she should stick to just posing for underwear, mo underwear model ads. Or she should stick to posing for lingerie ads because she can't fucking act. Just because she helped produce the film doesn't mean she should be the lead. If she can't fucking act, then she shouldn't be the lead actor or the actress. The lead actress in the film. Plain and simple. Have some fucking balls and say, no, you're not the lead. Well, then I'll, I'll, we'll do, I will not fund your movie. Well, then fine. It maybe it shouldn't have been made in the first place. This is the only reason why the film was made. It's so this actress who cannot act at all can star in a vanity project. Then it should have been made in the first place. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm just being honest. So she's more screen time than Lance Henriksen. And... It's just abysmal, and Lance Henriksen, oh, spoiler alert, oh, he dies, oh, he fucking dies in the end, so, you know, hey, there you go, Lance Henriksen dies, and gets infected with whatever, the by the creature, whatever the fuck it is, and uh, the one girl goes on to be the final girl and the last survivor of the Harbinger, and even does, like, a voiceover, like, she's fucking Ripley. So, yeah, <laughs> Wonderful. So we get the shitty found we get shitty CGI to open up the film, shitty found footage to 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 end up coming after it. Then the film is so bad that it has to have subtitles on the bottom of the screen to tell you what where where the events are happening. Because it earlier was a Russian thing in the 80s, and now it says. Now. <laughs> it's like, now. Which I'm like, really? Now on the bottom of the screen? Pre and, uh, just remind me of Spaceball. It's a much better movie. I'm like, when are we going to get back to then? Soon. What well, we're now. Now, sir. Well, when are we going to go back to then? Soon. Now is now. <laughs> so, it, it was just like, wow. Just... 
uh, that's a mark of a bad film that has to have that stupid shit on the bottom of the screen. And then for some reason this movie seemed to have all these stupid shit on the bottom of the screen about the time, had to tell you what time it was, or, and I was like, where they were at, it's like, I don't give a shit where, where you are in this plot. I don't give a fuck about which country or which part of fucking Antarctica or the Arctic or wherever the fuck you are. I don't give a shit. I don't care what time it is. Because all that reminds me of is how much of a waste of time your movie is and how much, oh, you know what? How much I should pick a better time to not watch this film and to watch something better like The Viathan and John Carver's The Thing or even Endless Descent because Endless Descent, even though it has a low budget and it has some bad effects, hey, it has some fun creature effects. At least it actually is somewhat imaginative in that regard, unlike this film, and it has some actual gore. This film has nothing, absolutely nothing in terms of gore. There's a few things here and there, but the camera is so fucking bad and the editing is so terrible, it's like they just get killed by editing and you don't see anything anyway. So you get into this crew of this bunch of people you don't give a fuck about, they end up getting on the Harpinger, Lance Hemrickson just talks about a bunch of tomfuckery. That's exactly that sums up the film. You know that's what the tagline should be. It's a bunch of Tom fuckery. Harbinger down. It's a bunch of Tom fuckery. <laughs> this is pretty much what the entire movie is. So then they find whatever it is from the satellite in the ice. It own thaws and it infects this one guy who looks like he has a really just has a really bad fucking sunburn. That's all it looks like. He's just red. And that's it. He's running around, acting like a drunk asshole. The Jimmy, the James Cameron guy, by the way, the Jimmy Cammy look-alike. And then he's just like, ah, ah, and then, and then, what looks like fucking pink dildos burst out of his back and shoot pink cum all over the ceiling. And then he fucking dies. And I'm like, wow, that is the. That's what we were waiting for. Was that? Oh, and then after that, you get to see the cre the alien whatever creature. It kills some guy with tendrils, and it looks like a fucking snot bubble. It looks like a giant fucking loogie. It looks like a, just something I blew out of my nose and threw in the garbage. It looks fucking terrible. Or a giant spitball. It doesn't look scary. It doesn't look... It doesn't look... It does not look good in the slightest it looks lazy and sh shitty a fucking snot ball is the best you can give me alec gillis mr oh the voice the thing the live mouth and effects suck no these effects suck <laughs> your fucking snot bubble of doom so uh, the hand effect that you bitched about so much with the teeth coming out is ten times more terrifying than your fucking snot bubbles so anyway, the snot bubble kills a guy, a uh, guy has dildos pop out of his back and shoot pink cum all over the ceiling and he dies. One guy this gets fucking killed, I guess by uh, off screen, by fire, just a really terrible, oh yeah, what happens there, these tendrils pop out and just, it's so far away you don't see shit, he just gets grabbed by the tendrils. And then the next shot you see is for some reason that the camera is so fucking far away, like it's two miles away from the ship, and you just see this little tiny explosion. Go, I'm like, so that's how he died. That's so pathetic. I mean, that reminded me of Carnosaur Three. Carnosaur Three is better than this, by the way, too. But Carnosaur 3 had some really terrible explosion effects. But even then, it at least still had you showed the zoom in of the ship when it exploded it looked terrible but at least hey we didn't zoom as far away as we possibly could to cover up our shitty effects it's not a good cover up because it still looks like shit it just looks like you just did everything you could to cover up your shitty effect it's exactly what it was it's a shitty effect then you see the creature a little bit more and it's got fucking Christmas lights all over it and it looks like they just ripped off Steve Johnson's aliens from the abyss. That's what it looks like to me. Just he saw the abyss, said, fuck it, we're gonna rip off those aliens and call it a fucking day. It wasn't impressive to me because I saw it already in the abyss. 
I have to admit, those were better looking, though, than the fucking snot bubbles and, and the pink dildos. But that's not saying much. But, of course, then you also see what looks like Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. Or one of the creatures from the Deadly Spawn. That eats some guy. It's nothing. Looks pretty shitty as well. The, the effects look better than the Deadly Spawn. I've seen better effects in Street Trash. I've seen better effects in a movie called The Suckling. They all had cheaper budgets than this movie did. A low budget is an excuse for bad screenwriting, bad editing, bad directing, bad characters, and below average visual effects. And really subpar practical effects. No excuses. I'm sorry. I'm not giving this film a pass. For failing on so many different levels. So then you get further into the film, and then the creature has a tendril thing that like attacks some guy, which just looks like they just fucking gave up. Like Al Gill just gave up and just copied a death scene from the thing prequel. You see, you also we see a scene where it looks like he just copied Leviathan because the creature has a human face. It's kind of marine looking, but then it looks like a marine creature. I'm like, it's the same fucking wow. It's just a really shitty looking version of the Leviathan creature. Great. Golf clap. Really impressed, Alec Gillis. So then, and there's like well, this other person who gets killed by bad editing. Like he's just like ah, and then like the camera just cuts really terribly, and then he fucking dies and. There's like some CGI blood or something. Lance Anderson gets infected, tries to go after the creature. The girl gets off. They set a bomb on the boat. And then the girl ends up getting off the boat before it explodes in a really number of shitty effects. She kills the creature. She lands on a fucking ice flow. She ends with her narration. Like I said, like, like she thinks she's fucking Ripley. Like the last survivor of the Harbinger Duck. Harbinger, Harbinger Down, you know, has to say the film's title. And then the movie ends. I'm about ready to go and find out Gillis and beat his ass for delivering such a god-awful shitty movie, for talking so much shit on Leviathan, for talking all this shit about Kickstarter and all of these problems and all of this, and talking about Kickstarter isn't all it's meant to be, but hey, Still come in and phone my film. People did, and it's fucking. It stinks on ice, and you're just like, ah, whatever. Just make whatever excuse you want to. And people are just like, oh, it's not that bad. It was a low budget. Hey, come on, give it a pass. No, I'm not giving it a pass. I'm not giving shit a pass. I'm not doing it. If it's shit, it's shit. And I'm gonna call it shit. That's what Arbiter Down is. It's shit. It's a piece of shit. So, and even the running time didn't help it. The movie is literally not even an hour and 20 minutes. And that wasn't enough. It felt like almost three hours half the time. Because th there's no likable characters. The direction is flat. The cinematography is almost completely non-existent. The score, forgettable. Sounds like a million other scores you've heard a million other times in a million other movies Christopher Drake the film makes references to better films like it makes a reference to the thing but John Barrett Carpenter's the thing it make it shows you the chess wizard the chess the computer that uh McCready played in, in the, the thing they show you that fucking chess thing I'm surprised this is a cheating bitch <laughs> surprised they didn't do that it's like, don't do that. Don't re show references to much better films in your piece of shit. That's never a good idea. And it never works out. Didn't work out in The Lost Boys, The Tribe. It didn't work out here either. It never works out, period. This reminds your audience that they'd rather be watching a better movie than your piece of shit. So, even... So... Yeah, I really don't know what else to say about Arbinger Down. I, I just this movie really put me in a bad mood. I've been waiting to tear this movie a new asshole for a while now, 
and it feels good to let it out. It really does. Because this is a movie that I was looking forward to. I was actually talking about and trying to hype it up and send links about it to my friends and, and a movie I would have paid money for to get it funded and to see it the final product be so lazy, be so uninspired. Oh, of course, I forgot. Yeah, the climax is the creature just pops out of the ground, just a bunch of fucking waving tentacles. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's your big reveal at the end. Just, <laughs> it reminded me a lot of the Thing prequel. I didn't like that either. Like, the scenes where the guy's face rips open and there's a bunch of <laughs> tentacles just fly around. For a film and for a production, that was so hyped about how it was going to help save practical effects. How it was going to prove everyone, prove to everyone that sees it, the practical effects are here to stay. And to see that that film was just, did not do that job well at all, was just the last straw for me. This is not the movie that people can look at and say, see, practical effects are here to stay. No. This is a movie that could honestly kill off practical effects and make people see this movie and be like, you know, maybe we should go with CGI because that looks fucking terrible. Christmas lights and and the, just a bunch of waving fucking tentacles and, and dildos and just, there's no ingenuity whatsoever displayed in this film in terms of the practical creature effects. And this is from a company that has done that, has made a living doing that. Don't tell me they couldn't have just used scraps and other material for, and used it as, I don't know, a write-off from their own company to add more ingenuity and more something to this production because from what I saw, there was nothing. There was nothing memorable about these creatures. There's no memorable death scenes. There's no memorable gore. There's the directors who are makeup effects stars didn't know how to shoot their effects because they had them in harsh lighting at one time, then with spotlights on them at one time, and then at others it's just too too, too dark to see anything. So they could they, they failed on both aspects. They just shot it with too much harsh light, or they didn't give it enough, and then you couldn't even fucking see it anyway. So it was a really huge, enormous letdown for me, and and this is not a film that I think deserves a pass. It's not a film that I think deserves to get, oh, weak praise, limited praise for just trying, giving it a good shot. No, it doesn't. Because this is a company, and this film's produced by a company that is known for their special effects and their creature effects, and they deliver arguably one of the laziest, one of the worst films in recent memory that I've seen, especially when it comes to their creature effects. That's what's supposed to be their claim to fame, and they literally fucking do the bare ass minimum in this movie. So that's just unacceptable, in my opinion. Completely unacceptable. I can't think of one single fucking positive for this movie. I can't. I can't think of a single thing. I can't think of any of the practical effects, because even when they were decent, they were just that. They were just adequate. And there should have been a lot more than that, considering who was working on the film. The performances, Lance Henriksen has nothing to do except sh say shitty lines and then die. The the lead actress is one of the worst fucking actresses I've ever seen. And she, she does nothing to help the film. Nobody else does anything to help the film. None of the other cast members are memorable. None of the other actors can act. The direction is piss poor and terrible by Al Gillis. The, the writing by Al Gillis is awful. I could I think a brain-dead fucking monkey could write a better script than he did. And there's nothing about this movie that is remotely worth praising or remotely worse. I mean, remotely worse. See, I can't even say worth. Because I'd rather say worse than worth because this movie has no worth. It's fucking worthless. It's a worthless piece of fucking shit that should go down with the ship and go down and down underneath the fucking sea fall into the Marinar Trench and never be seen again it's that awful it's that bad it is one of the worst films I have ever seen and is definitely the worst film of the year for me so yeah
take that for what it is. All I gotta say is fuck Harbinger down. It gets two thumbs down. It gets sent straight down to hell. And then some. I would rather, much rather, absolutely would rather watch a fucking wall than watch this movie again. I'd rather watch paint dry. I'd rather wa eat fucking paint than watch Harbinger down. I There's a million of other things that I would rather do than watch this movie. Lick the bathroom floor. I'd rather fucking do that. Clean the bathroom floor with my fucking tongue. Infinite amount of time things I would rather do. Would stick a firecracker up my ass. Rather fucking drown than watch this. I'd rather jump into a fucking swimming pool full of razor blades. Get my point? That's how much I hated this movie. Fuck this movie. Fuck Alec Gillis, you arrogant prick. I'm serious. I, I'm really a Mr. Voice of the suck. I'd rather talk about Alien 3 and then support this movie and Kickstarter sucks. And But hey, come in and fund my movie anyway. And we're going to give you a movie that will make the really be great and scare the hell out of you and have great effects. And it doesn't have great effects. It has shitty effects. It's terrible. There's no ingenuity at all here. You, don't, you fucking loafed. You're a fucking loaf, Alec Gillis. Just like your fucking movie. Fucking loaf of shit. Just sitting there in the toilet. And it refuses to flush. So yeah. Fuck this movie. Fuck Alec Gillis. And that's all I gotta say. See ya. Zero stars. There you go. Zero. You get a fucking goose egg. You get nothing. Nothing harbinger down. A big fucking nada. A big zero. A big giant asshole. That's what you get. Anyway, thank you for watching my rant on harbinger down. And I will see you guys later. See ya.